All right, a couple months ago, I started smelling some gas around the truck. And when I was filling it up, it was blowing back up through the fill nozzle. So I was putting it in, you know, like you're supposed to, and it was blowing back up. So I had to start trickling it to get it in. This is new gas cap, because the old gas cap, it wouldn't do that click anymore. And without that click, um, it can screw up the EVAP system, make your check engine light come on, which is what was happening. And it was also saying uh, major leak detected in the EVAP. So I got a new cap, put that on. Reset the light, stayed out for a while, still smelled gas, and uh, then the light came back on. Well, I hate crawling around in the driveway trying to do stuff under a vehicle, so I just waited till I finally got a chance to put it in here and put it up on the lift. Um, changing my oil, rotate my tires today, and changing out the towing hitch. So anyway, I crawled up. Let me get underneath here. I crawled up in here, checked my hoses, everything is good. Went back on the top of the gas tank, feeling it as best I could, and it's all wet. Smelled my fingers, and it's gas. I said, ah, well, there's the problem. So I took a couple pictures of it, tried to get a video of it. wasn't real good. But you can see some heavy rusting up in there on the top of the gas tank where the fuel pump is, where the lines hook on. Um, so I'd say that's where the air leak is. Of course, it's Saturday. Nobody's open around here on Saturday. It's Monday morning, I need to call and see if anybody's got a fuel pump in stock. If not, get one coming, hopefully. Um, my old truck, I had the same problem. I had to replace the pump on that. And there's three ways to do it. You can drop the gas tank out, which is a real pain. Or you can cut a hole in your truck body, and then you have a hole you're always going to look at, or you take the body off. Here's a body mount right here. So on the other one, I wound up actually uh, taking the body off, and I hung the body right from the ceiling. Closed the door, wound the truck up, ratchet strapped it to the ceiling, and lowered the truck down. So that's what I'm going to wind up doing this time too. But I live in Maine. It's a 10 year old truck. Things get rusty up here. Well, this is a fun project. I was going to hang the body from the ceiling, but the lag bolts that I was cranking up into the stringers just kept snapping off. So I had to do it this way, just sliding the thing back, make room. I took the tires off so I'd have room to work with here so that the fender would clear and slide back. And uh, I learned to shut the radio off before you make a YouTube video because if not, then somebody's going <clears> to <throat> have an issue about copyrights if they hear music in the background. So here's what the top of the pump's looking like. Yeah, rough shape. So this is one of Chevy and GM's better designs. You get a nice bowl in here that collects crap and makes it rust. See all that geeb? See how deep that is? So what that does is, that's all gas right there. What that will do is, as you can see, it just collects road crap in there. It collects salt. It just sits there and there's real no easy way to get in there and wash it out and keep it clean and then it just chews away at the fuel pump so i'm going to wipe this mess up blow it off with air hose clean it up and i'm hoping 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 that the ring on the tank the, the tank itself is plastic but there's a metal ring that flashlight died that the metal ring on the fuel pump locks into. I'm hoping that metal ring is salvageable. If not, I need a new tank. I already know that my local auto parts store can't get them. So 
get her cleaned up, see what we got. Okay, I got the wires disconnected. Um, this is how bad this thing is. You can, you can see right there, you can see right down into the tubing. Same thing over here on this line. Get a hole right there. This thing is shot. So here's the metal collar that holds the fuel pump down in there. I'm gonna finish trying to clean this mess up as much as I can. And these are the uh, collar rings that I was concerned about. There's another one here. So far, what I've got uncovered, they look like they're in good shape. So that's a good thing. There's another one over here. It feels like it's solid. Another one in here, and there's a couple more over and around in here. I'm going to try and get all this mess cleaned out of here because there's less chance of dropping stuff in the tank when I actually pull the pump out. But I guess on these two, I'm not going to need my special tools to disconnect them because they're going to fall right apart anyway. Then I need to get the old junk disconnected out of the inside of it. Get that disconnected, get that ring spun counterclockwise. You can see the slots in it. Get it spun around <clears throat> and then the pump should come out. Okay, I got all the lines disconnected. This one was a bit of a pain coming off, which all you should have to do is squeeze those and you can see some locking tabs in there. You should just have to squeeze those and wiggle it off right there. But that rust was kind of jamming it up, so I had to squeeze it and lightly tap around here with a hammer and keep wiggling and jiggling and tap and tap and tap and work it till it finally broke free. And I still got to get that piece of crap and this piece of crap out of here. Hopefully that goes okay. Now I need to get this ring spun kind of clockwise. You can see how it kind of locks together here. So here's some tabs that you can put a, <clears throat> a punch or something in and hammer it. So we'll see how well that goes. Hopefully we can get her spun back. All right, finally, finally getting somewhere here. This is not preferred way of how I wanted to do this. Use an air chisel. Don't really like steel on steel with gasoline around, but didn't have much other choice. So you notice you get slots, right? And here I've peeled them up. Um, I even went, you can see like right there, I went in there on, on the edge of the chisel, just trying to use vibration and work around that ring, trying to get that thing to start spinning. I moved it about yay much and it stopped. Well, I'm gonna win, I'm bigger than it is. So I just chiseled out, chiseled out, chiseled out, got in right here where I had some more meat, came right in horizontal, just pounded the crap out of it, and it finally broke free. So now it's, now it's spinning, now it's free, and it's coming off. This thing's obviously junk, that's why I bought a new one, because I figured it would, would be junk. No way I'm going to try and salvage that. So at this point, the fuel pump will come up out of the tank. I'm going to zip tie these lines out of the way just to get them out from the foot, I think. And clean this up again one more time real good. Blow all this crap out because I don't want to drop this mess in the tank. It's out of there. A little more detail on how bad this thing was. Yeah. I did this on my old 2005 Chevy a few years ago. So I kind of had an idea of what I was doing with it. Now keep in mind you've got a bowl down in here. Let's see if I can shake it a little bit. You can see it got gasoline in there so you want to pour that out into something probably just pour it right back into the tank 
Well, there's a hole. I'm gonna gently, using a clean rag, try to wipe up around this rim. Inside the tank, right below there. I'm, I'm not sticking my camera in there. Looks nice and clean in the bottom. I really wanna clean this up here as good as I can because that's where the rubber o-ring is gonna seal down. So what I was afraid of, of these being all rotted off, fortunately they are all good. So I don't need to replace the gas tank, thank God. All right. And uh, you Southerners, you don't have the rust problems like we do. So you could probably do this fairly easy without having to use air tools to vibrate the ring off. So here's the new ring. And on pro tip, when you go to the store and you get your new pump, they'll tell you, yep, it's got everything you need. Um, I had to put the float on that comes loose in the, uh, in the bottom so it doesn't get broke off, but just sticks in the hole and clips in right here in this bracket. Pretty simple and straightforward. There's your gas, gas gauge brain right there. But they'll tell you, yep, that's everything you need. Yeah, it is. As long as your ring isn't rotted off. This doesn't come with it, this comes separate. So if you think you're gonna have to put a new ring on it, make sure you grab one. All right, let's deep six this baby and put her down in the hole. Somewhere in here is, there it is, the rubber O-ring. So we gotta get that fished up over all this mess without breaking anything. It seats right up in here. That seals down to the gas tank. We'll set that in the hole, make sure it's oriented right. Then we put the ring on before we start hooking up any lines. Okay. I'm getting there. So as long as I get them two broken pieces out, we'll be styling. So the new pump is set. Sorry I couldn't really get a good video of doing it. But I don't have a cameraman. So the o-ring is on. Carefully put the float down in there, made sure it cleared, set the pump down in, wiggled and jiggled, set right down, popped it in. You'll notice there's a metal tab right there that sits between this ear and this ear over here. Seats in. It's only going to fit one way. So as long as your, your two ports are going towards here and then this one's going here, everything should line up correct. So your lock ring, you notice you've got a bit of a flange here, rises up. That goes up. Make sure you put it on before you put your lines on. There we go, get her seated down on over there. So now what we gotta do, you can see better on this one because it's not all rotted out. That's how it works. Get a wide gap and a narrow gap. So we gotta push it down. Yes. Oh, look at that, I did it with one hand. Start it in. Look around, make sure every slot is started. And if we need to, we can just use a punch and go around a couple places and tap it clockwise till it tightens down. And that'll seat it in. Now, if you forget to put your O-ring in and figure it out later, you have to take this all back out. And if you think, well, I'm just not going to bother with an O-ring, well, then you can start getting water and crap in your gas. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Spun around and stopped. <coughs> it's gone as far as it's going to go. So I'm not going to force it. So the pump is in. So my next step is going to be getting these old broken pieces out of here, I hope. Once that's done, just plug, 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 plug in, plug in, and the truck should start. All right, I got that piece. 
out of there. So that clip, you gotta be able to get in underneath it, squeeze them tabs, slide it up, and it slides off. So now this can connect. Get it down where it's supposed to be, yeah, underneath that. There we go. So that will plug in all the way like so. <clears throat> Slide down, click on, secure. All right, that one's done. <clears throat> this is going to be a fun one. I've got the special tool that fits in there to disconnect those types. So I'm going to try and slide that in and then reach in with a pair of needle nose and wiggle out that rusted piece. Then that piece there will just clip on. So we're making headway. Okay, if we look in there, at about 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9, you can see four gizmos. Those are locking tabs. This slides in there. It's supposed to go around a tube like so, and slide in. And then this outer shell presses those and expands them, which is what lets it slide off over this collar and un unlocks it. I think this light's getting ready to die too. So hopefully I can stick that in there, get those to release pull that thing out let's see what we get well this was not the ideal way to do this <clears throat> um, with that return line I could not get that rusted piece out so I just cut it off this is junk now I had some fuel line I got slid on and I've got it hose clamped to the return line there's no pressure there uh, main line is connected, that's connected. Plug that in. When I was taking this apart, the locking tab broke off, so this plug was loose. So you kind of see what I did here. I ran a zip tie all the way around this to hold it together, then zip tied this to hold it tighter. So it's good and secure now. Don't want that coming unplugged. Now I was going to run this line down, hook it up at the other end of this and fire the truck up, make sure everything's running right, make sure you don't have any leaks, and then I can put the bed back on. I'm not gonna leave this permanent, it's just a temporary solution. Probably would be at least one or two days before I could get a new return line to put on here. And I don't have the time to wait for that right now. I need to get the truck rolling again. So this will work for the time being. Well, it sounds promising. It's running. I turned that hose clamp over this way. Because my hope is that I can change this without having to take the body off again. So I'm thinking with it up on the lift, I can reach up in through here with the socket, loosen that up, pull this off, and then get the new line in. It just plugs on. I don't have to try and clamp anything or do anything hanky. <clears throat> All right. We don't have anything leaking here. Take a look underneath, see what we got. Nothing's leaking up there. You can see where that rubber line is connected onto the steel return line. That's just a, basically a plug and play connection too. Still smells like gas. It's going to take a little while for that to dissipate. Everything seems tight at the moment. Gas gauge works. So after I get the truck all put together, I'll reset the codes in it, dump everything out, and see how it does. All right, I got the body wiggled the back down on here. Got the holes fairly close to being lined up. 
then it pretty much fell right into place. So I'm just going around and starting these up in here by hand. You got one there, one here, one on the other side of the frame there, and then the one in the rear. So get all the bolts started in, make sure everything's lined up, and then uh, tighten them all back up. Then we gotta put this friggin' vent snorkel thing back up in there and put the uh, filler tube and vent and everything back up in there. That snorkel thing clips in right there. I'll show you on the back side. Goes up in the top of there and just snaps in. So now I need to get uh, I'm breaking crap here. Not get dirt in there. Get that up through the hole, get that lined up, and then there's three screws that come down through. You can see the screw holes there. Screw that in, that'll be good to go, and put the gas cap back on. The only thing to do after that is, well actually, we're gonna do it right now. This is all stuff I had to do, take the body off, obviously. You got plug block right here. I labeled this one top. So I had to unplug um, these two wiring harnesses that went up to the body. The other two I didn't have to worry about. The one comes down to the reese hitch and the other one stays on the frame so those aren't going to move so those two there just unplug those so there now my lights will work again so as soon as i get the uh oh whatchamacallit here gas cap gas boat back in the truck should be ready to go oh yeah put the tires back on too you got three screws and a triangle here. Depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, depends on where you want to start to make it easier. Um, you can stick your finger in there and pull this up through and get the holes lined up to get started. It's a, uh, I don't know what the hell it is. Five, nine thirty seconds socket. Then do your top one last. And for God's sakes, don't drop your little screw down the friggin' fill hole. Don't drop your socket down the fill hole either. All right. The gas cap can go on. Twist it up here. These friggin' leashes they have on them. There we go, we got a click. That's what we want. Awesome, tires and Throw the tailgate back on and roll right up the door.